It's been a hot minute, I know. Not much has changed on the Cutlass. I did get some of the things I've been waiting on. Um, I decided to go ahead and use the PPS style setup. Even my spray guns, I got the adapter for it. So now I don't have to worry about spilling stuff everywhere, but <clears throat> on to the real reason. Right now I'm going to dig out that BMX bike right there and I'm going to start taking it apart. So that means I have quite a few things to move right now. And then I will get, oh, and I gotta grab my toolbox and then I will get back with you. All right, so this dusty old thing that you see here in front of you was new back in 1998. It originally was not blue with the metal flake in it, it's black. And it's from a company called Bully. This is the hot rod. I bought it brand new when I was racing BMX at a pro level. No, the seat was not this high. It was lower, much lower. As in the seat itself was probably down here and it's a totally different version anyway. So now, and I've updated the rim since then and a few other things. This bike and bikes like it were top of the line back then in 98, 7, 96. This is about 96, I believe, not 98. It's roughly around 96, I bought this. But bikes racing today, this is a tank <laughs> compared to them. Everything's, you know, everything's different. This used to be light in comparison. Well, not anymore. Not when you compare, not, no, I was just wondering what the dog was doing. Now, when you compare this to BMX bikes of today, I mean, heck, I think it was in 2007, I took this to the track just to take a few laps to see how it would be. I had some kids you <laughs> ask me, how old is that bike? I looked at them and said, probably twice your age. All right, well, first things first, let's lower the seat. The uh, center of gravity is too high. Anyway, the past week has been somewhat of a living nightmare as in I just you know we went to the races didn't get to see any racing but we did get to see the cars well we get a phone call that an emergency happened at home so we rush home and that takes an hour we get home everything gets taken care of we're not going to drive another hour to go back to the track so that day is pretty much shot well later on that day i get a call from a fam another family member this time down in florida that another emergency has happened my dad is in the hospital he had we had thought he had slipped and fell there we go Ooh, sorry for the shakes. Originally, it was thought that he slipped and fell and hit his head. And that's why he went to the ER the second time. It wasn't. He slipped, though. He didn't hit his head. There's a lot more to the story. I'm just being kind of vague, really, to be honest. Um, there's a lot more to be on. Yeah, really? But, um, ooh, that was loose. Um, there's a lot to be, there's a lot to the story, but I've been basically like most people. I mean, there's really not much there between me and my dad, but I have been worried and upset and kind of in a funk and depressed and didn't want to do anything until I found out what the heck is going on because it's been bad enough, most of them, that well thought that might have been there's a lot of other things going on that I might be I will be making a trip to Florida here soon to see him but um, we're not sure what else is going to happen with that in the future so right now I'm not really wanting to work on the cutlass 
I'm not really wanting to work on anything, but I do want to uh, paint this bike at least. So I want to do something, keep busy instead of just sitting behind my computer in my house all day like I have been doing. So this is where I'm at, this is what I'm doing. Now I guess I'll walk you guys through it while I'm going along and explain BMX bikes of old. So aside from all that, that's pretty much what's been going on. But a little bit more history on this bike. All right, so I raced BMX for several years and I hit pro level uh, roughly about age 17 and um, started making a decent, you know, I wasn't making a living at it. There was no way I wasn't racing that much. Oh, excuse me. So I bought this bike because the, the specs, the specs, oh, let me get these pedals off. No, they're fine. The specs are kind of what I needed. It has a short, the short rear end, this triangle right here, from here, here was short and this was long. Meaning that the distance between the center of the hub to here, basically where your butt is, your set, you, your body is it at, is closer to the back, making it easier to pull the front tire up. So that in the pro level, we never really jumped, hit jumped jumps a lot because going airborne, a lot of your momentum is spent going up versus going forward. So a lot of the jumps, you would pull up your front tire and you would just manual through them, okay? Or you would pull your front tire up, say if they were two small rollers, you would pull your front tire up and just kind of skim the top manual through those two or if it was three skin the top if you could jump the three but you wouldn't you know try to let the front tire hit the front the lip of the jump and jump it like that you would just hit the back tire kind of a bunny hop over the three and that was it you would essentially be going over the top of the, th the three this high versus you know several feet so your momentum was going forward versus up and forward and nobody and you would keep that momentum as you went forward Obviously, because you weren't on the ground, you weren't pedaling. Um, so that's why I wanted it. It made it easier to pull the front end up. I can't remember the frame I had before, but this frame also at the time had a lot of advantages. This tube here is not completely round. It is oval. It is oval here in the front, top to bottom, for the strength of the head tube here. And it is oval here, side to side, for the bottom bracket, for the strength of torque when you're pedaling. Oops, sorry. It is ovaled lengthwise of the bottom bracket. And if you compare it to most BMX bikes, it'll just be round and go and weld right to there. This goes all the way across so that when you're torquing and pedaling on this, you're not flexing the frame. Okay? Now, it gets a little bit around right here, then this immediately starts to oval right here again, okay? This top tube is completely ovaled all the way across for strength, see? Then it's got a gusset weld right here for strength, and then they reinforced this tube right here for the junction you don't need much strength right here because this is basically a support for where the um, tube goes. Then they did the same thing right there. They added strength right there, and then they drilled this through because the you know the the bright the brakes. These brakes are designed to run on the bottom. These are more effective brakes than than the ones that mounted on the top here. These brakes are far more effective. So, well, I don't know what you use, they use today, but they were then. So that's how what this bike was designed for. And this bike was designed for excellent speed, 
easier maneuverability and it was designed to keep the torque out of the frame so that you weren't worried about torquing the frame out and damaging it. All your power went through and into your pedals. Okay? And every pedal and all the and if we know it's the same way with cars, the more pedal you can the more torque that isn't lost through the drivetrain, through here, through the gearing and through the back tire, the more power and torque that is put to this wheel. Okay? So that was the i'm pretty sure the idea behind this whole setup and then we got the handlebars here elf bars they're called they have they're they're not a single tube that's bent with one welded here they're welded here 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 and the same thing on the other side that keeps strength strength in the handlebars okay this the, if the single well the single tube handlebars they usually get pinched right here and then you start pulling on them they get egg shaped right there so you can never adjust them as you go it's pinching them between the uh the headset right here will cause an oval and a pinch weld or not a pinch weld but a pinch within that oval it'll look like an egg shape and then go into it'll be ovaled and then it'll bulge out and then the bottom piece will oval bulge out you'll never be able to adjust it but this right here because of the chromoly single tube is stronger you can well you can pinch it all you want and change it and it'll never change shape so now over time if you're not careful and i've experienced this myself you get an older set of handlebars they get a well rust on these welds and you're not paying attention well, you go over a jump one day, pull hard, and they t they fall apart. Yeah, I've had that happen. So, um, that's how those were designed. And of course, the headsets, the upper, you know, the the front end, everything's different these days. Heck, even the bottom brackets. These are a lot smaller than the European style now. These are old old i can't even i don't even know how old this bottom bracket is i mean this was one of my first purchases when i after i started racing a while simply because the single piece these are three piece cranks one arm one arm and a center center bracket bottom bracket okay i can't remember anyway those are the three pieces, and these are the ankle savers right here, bolts. The other ones stick out, bite you in the ankle bone. They're 180 millimeters long for length, for making it easier to pedal. I ran a 45 tooth gear in the front, 16 tooth gear in the rear. That was a very, very, well, that was a spinning gear, which for, you, I, anyway, it's a whole nother thing to get into. But this reason buying a three-piece gear, not just profile three-piece gear, if you had the one-piece gear that comes on most BMX bikes from the store, tor riding on them hard enough after a while, what'll happen is, is instead of the uh, crank arms staying perfectly straight to each other like this, eventually you'll torque on one so hard that all of a sudden, you'll have one with a pedal sitting over here. It'll be offset. They will bend. Same, you know, same reasoning that we change over to three piece cranks. And plus these are longer for the taller, you know, when you get older and you get taller as a, you know, when you get around to, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old racing in this class, getting these longer brackets for the, the longer arms for the longer legs creates it, makes you be able to have more um leverage that's the word i'm looking for leverage while you're spinning this combination so that was the same principle as getting this piece handlebars here here lack of damage and strength and weight savings well not really much weight savings but at the same time one thing for another inside here you have sealed bearings these bearings i'll be taking them out here let me go ahead and take these arms off and then i'll show you more okay so these things have been on there for so long that this 
ain't working. That's amazing. I'm gonna try and attack it from the other side here in a second. Okay, escalation process has been approved. We will now take our locking mechanism and proceed. There we go. For some reason, I got this sinking feeling. I might need to get a different locking mechanism. Wait, wait. Oh, oh, look at that, it might work. Look at that, got it. You. Yeah. All right, time to do the other side. Let's see, we are looking at it backwards. Oh, it's loose now too. Go. Oh. Never get that lucky. All right, so. There you go. Fix up a little bit. All right, so now. Go ahead and take this out. Give me my little washer here that it sits on inside. One for each side. Now, hopefully, the crank arm comes up. Yep. Easy peasy. So, one piece off. I'll be taking the chain ring off, too. Yeah, and that holds it in place, but also helps you to line it up to your um, bottom bracket here. But at the same time, you can use it as a little bit of play movement if you have an extremely tight spot between in the chain. You can use this here to move this ever so slightly to minimize that tight spot so that the chain is more even all the way across, you know, all the way around its revolution. Because sometimes in the revolution, you'll have a tight spot in it in a, and it'll be extremely loose in another. Now, I always use this to adjust this ever so slightly on here because you always have that little bit of movement and uh, get rid of that and try to make it as even as possible so we got these three here we got this one over here for that so and this is the bottom bracket this is loose i'll just leave it in there so now like i said you got the sealed pieces and you can see the spacer right inside there that is directly behind the centerpiece of these bearings. Now this one over here is a little crunchy. So I might go ahead and punch it out of its, when I take these caps out, punch the bearing out of the cap, and then pull the seal from, seal from the inside piece, clean it up, then re-grease it, then put it back together. So it'll be good for another 20 something years. <laughs> yeah this thing's been going on that long so oh and i gotta pull this right here little little trick right there little spoke nipple that's used right there just use that to keep your uh the end of your brake cable from fraying so all right i'm gonna get me a hammer and a long extension and start punching out these bearings so anyway, yeah, this is just basically trying to get my butt back in gear um, after I didn't really want to take a week off like that, but I thought I would be heading down to Florida sooner, but I'll probably be heading down there. I don't know when. So um, a lot of things have a lot of things depend on um, his rehab. I just pop the bearing out by itself. That makes it easy. Um, and there's that uh, sleeve in the center. A lot of things are going to depend on the rehab, what they say, and uh, how how well he's doing, and when he goes home. So, because the initial doctor said that um, 
well, might as well just get a shorter extension. The initial doctor in the hospital said, because of all the things that are going on with him, is best thing for him would be um, take him to rehab and then go home for hosp with hospice. Now, it comes into question, was it hospice for um, Ooh. Is it hospice for care, as in um, following up and helping him move around, or is it hospice for end of life? So we don't know what's going on because when he fell and when he was in the hospital, a lot of things happened at the same time. I mean, there was a bunch of different things happening at once. Um, there was a, things going on with his blood, things going on with his head. Thing, you know, it's just a culmination of things all of a sudden. You know, a couple of them weren't sudden. One or two of them people have known about. Um, but to see them... There we go. To see them almost almost manifest in the way that they did, um, there's the backside. You know, obviously over the years, using the wrong or using a screwdriver to punch this out. I don't know if you can see that really well, but yeah. Anyway, several of the things manifested while he was in the hospital. And um, had us worried that he wouldn't make it through. And with the doctor, and with the doctors mentioning hospice, obviously the first thing that comes to your mind is, well, he's going to die. You know. Um, but the hope is that hospice is just there for assistance afterwards versus um assistance during you know what i mean that would be nice oops gravity um that would be nice and that's what i'm hoping for you know i think that's what we're all hoping for so that's the idea There we go. I'm kind of waiting on um, news from them as to what day he gets out of rehab. And then that will be the day I start traveling. Because um, like I said before, even though things between me and him, in my opinion, weren't always great in the you know towards my later years I still would like to see him um, and they are getting ready to travel huh so and plus the way the doctors put it it's just not sounding good but it's also we get reports from my stepmom now he's sounding better which is a good thing. I ain't complaining about that, that's for sure. Um, uh, well, yeah, which I'm not going to complain about that simply because, I mean, who wouldn't want to hear of a family member or a loved one getting better versus getting worse? I mean, you really got to be an evil person to uh, wish that. So that's where I've been. That's why I'm only working on this. I mean, granted, I could sand. I think what I'll do once I'm done taking this apart. All right, I'm over here real quick. And I think after I'm done with that bike up there, I'm gonna go ahead and at least start on the taillight section. This whole piece here that comes off. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt it, take it off. Same thing with the uh, driver's side taillight over there. 
then going to pop the tail light itself out, re-chrome it, not re-chrome it, but take this uh, whatever it is I put on there off. And then I'm going to go and clean this very, very well. And then um, take these lines here and I'm going to paint them white. I think they used to be silver. This was me painting over them because they had faded it originally. I'm going to paint them the white that I'm going to paint the top of the car. And then I'm going to, well, I'm going to scuff them. And then I'm going to paint this white. And then I'm going to clear coat these. Same thing like I did with the Camaro when I scuffed up the um, two rear side marker lights and the third brake light because they were dull looking old. See how they're much newer and nicer, shinier looking? I know it's hard to tell because it's not in the sun, but this used to be really faded and scuffed it with 400 grit and uh, definitely made a difference. So um, I'm gonna do that with the tail lights on this, on the cutlass. So, all right, let's get back to work on this. All right, so I think I need a 10 millimeter actually to uh, take. Hey, look at that. I got lucky, but not lucky. All right, so, yeah, I need another 10 millimeter. Imagine that. So, yeah, that's what's been going on. Um, it's just been one of those weeks, you know, one, one emergency after another. And then one is, you know, one has been taken care of. Wait, I don't need to take this off. This can stay. What am I doing? Doing too much work. Um, yeah, one after the other. And the other one's been taken care of. And the other one's ongoing. So it just kind of put a damper on me. I did, you know, do the two videos of those cars and I really, really want to do more. And I know there's really not going to be really much interest in this, but I do want to do something to at least show you guys, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> um, I really haven't gone anywhere. It's just been one of those weeks i guess so i guess what i'll do is i'll go ahead and finish taking this apart i mean there's still quite a bit to do um nice and quiet so do you know that the quieter it is the more you well never mind anyway so yeah i'll finish taking this apart and i'm going to start sanding it and then getting it ready to paint. Uh, ooh, look at that dent right there. Interesting. Didn't even see that. Hmm. I'll leave it. Then I'm going to figure out how to try to get new stickers for this. Because the sticker packs, as far as I know, don't exist anymore. So, But it's going to be red this time. It's not going to be black. And I'm going to put that uh, F20 Metal Flake in the clear. And lay that over top of the red. And man, I hope that looks good. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it anyway. So, I'm going to end this video for now. I'll try to shorten it up a little bit. I know it's a lot of talking while I'm taking apart this bike. But, it is what it is for me right now. Sorry I've been missing in action for a while. But, it is where I've been. So, I'm going to keep moving on. I'll be back when this is ready to paint. So, Thank you all for hanging in there. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll talk to you later. And hopefully the next time we are doing anything is on this cutlass.